everybody. It's Lisa Marie here, living the sweet life in the Sweet Life Kitchen with Carl and our two chefs show. We were How getting, we doing? We were getting ready for y'all, and I want you to look at what I found. I have a little ladybug that's hanging out with us in the spinach, and we just had the great deep freeze in Texas, and so to see a ladybug right now is really wonderful because we haven't had running water in this house since, what, that Monday before my birthday on the 20th? Mm -hmm. Been what, a week and a half I've or so? I've been bathing maybe? in the hot tub forever and a day. I'm getting ready to go to Carl's house tomorrow and actually get a normal <laughs> bath with soap and water and no chlorine. But enough of all of that. I'm going to give this ladybug to James Edward to take out to the Sweet Life Garden. And we are going to be sharing with you today a wonderful recipe that I created. I'm so mesmerized with ladybugs. If y'all watch me in the garden, you'll see me playing with the butterflies too. Anyway, I am going to show you and Carl today, we're both going to show you how to make a gorgeous... Mexican style um, rolled meatloaf. And so let me give this ladybug to James. Take her out to the garden. She loves me. Be careful with her. Got her? The interesting thing, they just got done talking about invasive and non invasive species. Something that I, I, I learned something here. So. Well, they are, there are, for sure, ladybugs that are good, and then there's another one that I think it says it's Mexican or something, but it's got white dots, and if you see those in your garden, you got to spray some neem oil with a little bit of uh, dishwashing soap, and then they'll go away, because I don't like that. That gets rid of the bad bugs. So, the other thing, I don't know if you realize, you didn't get to the garden with me earlier, but mm -hmm. um, we were able to save a lot of stuff in the storm, and I did a garden oh, tour awesome. with James yesterday, Good. so we'll be in the garden again tomorrow working on a kale salad, But because kale's just real happy. So, and I know for the sake of time, we, we do have to hurry there, but I'm curious about, oh, sorry about that. I'm curious about what you just said. It'll get rid of the bad bugs. But the good, so the other bugs, they don't, they don't mind it or? No, they just don't, it's not something that affects them. They don't like the butterflies and the ladybugs and all the bumblebees and all the good stuff hmm. that pollinates. They're good. That doesn't seem to, they don't seem to mind. But the stink bugs that lay the little nymphs mm -hmm. that turn all of your, your eggplant and your tomatoes into hard rocks. They do not like any of that. Nymph. They don't like soap and water. They don't like it. <laughs> no, they don't like it too. Bad good. guys and bad bugs don't like soap and water. No, they All don't. Right. I guess. They don't. But I was going to tell you that the flowers out there, which you'll see tomorrow when we do do that part for the channel, the, all the little flowers that are out there, mm -hmm. they're all messed up and dried up and mad and angry and half dead or dead. Their little pods is where the butterflies and all these little baby good bugs are hibernating. So I'm not tearing those out of the garden just oh, yet because okay. I was like, you know what, I've, I've got to leave them there. Uh, one of the magazines called today wanting me to shoot their cover with some triplets that I shot when they were babies and now they're turning 15. I shot them again when they're like 10 and now 15 for their um, anniversary of their endowment that they did. Mm -hmm. And um, and she called and she said, okay, Auntie A, what do you have that's green? And I was like, not much. And I'm not pulling out all my dead flowers because mm -hmm. I'm saving my, my butterflies too. So let's get started because I know y'all don't need to hear us rambling on and on and on about what Sorry we don't to derail us, like but us to ramble on and on and on, but it is what it is. So right. here's what we're gonna do. I've got ground beef. I've got some of the potatoes that you can buy that are already shredded up. I've got Monterey Jack um, blended cheese there. I've got a can of Rotel. Okay. I've got two tablespoons. We're not going to need all of it, but two tablespoons of garlic, garlic salt. salt. Um, and then I've got a can of some red enchilada sauce. It's up to you how hot you want that to be. For us, it's mild. Mm -hmm. And then I've got some Lavaquita cheese, which is just some fresh cheese uh, that we're going to use at the very end along with herbs. So we've got some spinach, we've got some oregano, spicy oregano I just pulled from the garden as well. And then I've got okay. some cilantro, an onion, a bell pepper, and two eggs. So what I need for you to do Let's is cut I need for up. you to cut, yeah, I want you to cut up the bell pepper and the onion. And okay. I'm going to add into this mixture the egg and the potatoes and start working on blending everything together. And then we'll just go from there, All getting right. it into the oven to bake. Now, do you do you keep the center or do you discard that? I'll tell you what I do with the center. I take that center, guys, and I stick it in dirt. And then it starts to grow. Huh, what does it grow? It grows more bell peppers. Mm -hmm. And then I separate out those seedlings, and then I put that in the garden. So that is not trash. <laughs> All right. That's good to know. Yeah. 
All right, so to the mixture of the ground beef and the egg, I'm gonna sprinkle over approximately a, maybe a half of a tablespoon of the garlic salt. And then I'm gonna add to that the potatoes. Real quick, chopped or uh, diced. cubed, diced? Diced, just like the Rotel is. And then I'm gonna come over here and grab some black pepper, a pinch of black pepper, and I'm gonna do a little bit more salt because I didn't put that much of the garlic salt in there. And I'm going to put the Rotel in here. And when you get done, actually I'm gonna reach down below me and get a bigger bowl. I like using these bowls so you guys can see. We need to invest in some bigger bowls so that we can really keep it clear so that you guys can see the episode. But I'm gonna reach down underneath here and get a bigger bowl because I need to have all the stuff in the bowl and I'm already out of the bowl. So let me get a bigger bowl. Clankety clank, clank, clank. Okay, so put this in here like so, so I can really work like a chef. Two chefs in the kitchen mm -hmm. showing what we know. That's right. All right, I'm going to save that spinach. I'm going to show you how to do that because it's going to be real pretty as we put it in our layers to roll mm -hmm. everything up and then lay it in. You know, you can make a meatloaf. Everybody can make a meatloaf, but this meatloaf is fancy. And I know you're not surprised at that. <laughs> I'm going to add to this half of this, it's a big can, half of this can of the red enchilada sauce. And I'm going to add in a little bit of this cheese, a handful of the cheese, because I want that incorporated into the main, as long, uh, in addition to having it be an actual layer in the roll. Mm -hmm. So half of that, I'll move this out of the way. And once you get me that um, onion and that, I could probably be helping you with the onion. Mm. The onion and the, um, the pepper. We'll just put that pepper in there. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Good. Alright, All right, now I'm going to take this over here. Let me reach in here in front of you and pull one of these little guys out. And get me a knife too. Careful. What have you heard or have you heard anything for your family about getting the vaccine? Has that any news come through with you about that? Uh, no, and uh, um, honestly, you know, we're we're different, but we don't plan on getting it. Well, I'm debating we're, it myself. We're, we, but we're we've always been that way. We don't, you know, there's. There's a few things that we, we do, like whenever I traveled overseas, when I was in the oil field and, you know, had to go to certain places for like rare diseases, you know, I would get them. But for things like the flu and uh, what seems to be pretty much around the same thing, <laughs> COVID, that don't seem to be going anywhere, I don't believe in the getting a, getting a shot every year type thing it, it, and I typically am okay and then people get shots they get sick and everything that's well. right that's right well we got a call we got an email rather this morning this very morning um, that we are in we are now eligible with the heart disease and the diabetes Good. yeah well, I was about to say like like people like well you and like my father has uh, diabetes and stuff yeah you know I could see that you know getting that and not taking the chance right right but for us we we kind of just well, we normally don't do any of that either, but, and I'm still not completely convinced that I'm going to. You want me to put these in there? Um, I do. But one of the things that I have noticed being in the travel business as well, because you know, this trifecta right. of all the stuff that I do, I've noticed that some of the resorts and cruise lines are requiring, requiring that. Requiring it. And so if I expect to be traveling, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to be getting one. Um, but I was happy to hear about the Johnson & Johnson because I think that's the one that I'll try to get. I think I want to wait long enough to be able to actually say, which one I want to get and not be the first one to jump in and just get whatever they give <laughs> yeah, me. That's the other part about it. I, I typically let everybody else be the guinea pigs. You know, like, let's see what these side effects are. Right. You know, they came out with that stuff quick, you know. Right, exactly right. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's a good, maybe it's all good and it works, but I mean, you don't know. No, you don't. Carl, I think we're probably pretty good on the onion. We've got, okay. we'll need that for something else anyway, so that's fine. So but what we've got right. is we've got, um, I think you gave me about a half a cup of onion, mm -hmm. and then I just put in, y'all saw me chop up the oregano, 
and the oil, the spicy oregano, and then some cilantro. So I've got everything in here like that. You can see that. And I'm just going to get in here with my hands and get dirty. There we and go. And get everybody incorporated so that we've got our mixture set up the way we want it to be. And because I've used the enchilada uh, red sauce, that automatically puts into this meatloaf that good flavor. Color and the flavor. Yep, that good flavor. And, um, and it's really nice because it saves you a little bit of time trying to worry about your spices. But one thing you could do if you didn't have that is you could use a packet of the taco seasoning. And that would certainly work just as good. I still think you would want to have actually a little bit of it anyway to pour over the top. Because you know how you pour over ketchup and do sort of a, an A1 mm. really yummy sauce over the meatloaf to finish it. In this case, we're going to put cheese and we're going to put more cilantro and more of that red enchilada sauce once it's baked. Mm. So, for those of you guys that were watching us, I guess it was two weeks ago, we did the scotched quail eggs. Yep. And we used the method of taking the parchment paper and putting everything down on it and then squishing it down to make it, make, it, uh, yeah, make it flat. And so I'm going to go with that same concept today, showing you this meatloaf. Because what I want to do is, I'm not, I'm not going to push it down like I did and lay it over, but what I want to do is I want to get everything flat and kind of make almost like a little rectangle, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to lay in, this is my sneaky stuff. Uncle Brian does not like spinach. <laughs> And I know there's a lot of families out there that are struggling with getting their children to eat spinach or green for that matter, any green. And so what I'm doing here is I'm tucking into this um, some spinach. Your ladybug spinach. That hope, yes, our ladybug, that was so wonderful. Mm -hmm. That was such a wonderful sign from God. I just love ladybugs. I just love them. There's a few people in the, in the tribe that call me their little ladybug. Mm. I have a few that call me the, the queen bee, <laughs> and I have one more that calls me um, the grand mermaid. Because <laughs> I'm a Pisces, and they've mm. known me forever, okay. and they think I'm the grand mermaid, so that's kind of fun. So I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see me do what I'm doing. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna lay in a layer of this cheese. And actually, really, the, all the goodness. rest of this could go in here, or you could sprinkle a little bit over the top if you want to. And then the last step that we need to take here is we need to roll it. And so we're gonna go like this and work, work, work it, work it, work it, right? We're gonna roll it, and roll it some more. It's rolling. Yep, and roll it some more. It's not even cooked and it looks good. Oh, and roll it some more. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. This is as we always do. You and I always seem to make the most gorgeous things that we can actually serve to people for parties, even though we're not doing any parties these days. Um, and I, yeah. I like to tuck it down in here. And, you know, this is a nice size for a lot of people. And as you guys know, when we cook and we do our, our show, we do it for both families, for both of us. So this will be perfect for half at your house and half here at mine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tuck that spinach because I really don't want Uncle Brian to find it. <laughs> I want him to accidentally find it and it'd be too incorporated for him to do much. Brian, of she's got you, man. I don't want him to get to it. Every, every meal. I'm every always meal. sneaking something mm -hmm. in, trying to keep him healthy. That's right. God knows it's a chore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to wash my hands real mm -hmm. quick. What I want you to do, if you can, Put is we need pan. to get it into the pan. Okay. And so be careful if you need a spatula. Yeah, to not just break make it. Sure. Yeah, so I'm going to be right back. Carl, take right. it over from here. Let's see, let me not mess this up. You know, I feel like uh, I know what I'm going to do. Like Mr. Bean or something. See those skills? I'll see those skills right there. Uh -huh. Good job. I mean, uh, Good job, buddy. 
I don't know what I was doing to make money before, but I might want to well, consider changing it up. You're doing some <laughs> beautiful things. That is absolutely stunning, guys. It's just so pretty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of this enchilada sauce, and I'm going to pour it over it just like that. And then I'm going to finish it with the rest of this cheese. Yummy goodness. And I'm going to bake it in the oven for a good, probably 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I've got it on 350. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out, and then I'm going to sprinkle over it some of this crumbled up, gorgeous, uh, fresh cheese, Mexican cheese, and then some um, fresh cilantro. So we'll cover this up, mm -hmm. and then we'll get it baking. And when it's done, we'll be right back. All right, I think it's time for that meatloaf. I'm ready. All right. Hungry. I'm going to go to the oven and pull her out. Smelling it. And over here starving. I'll tell you one thing. I'm a growing boy. Yeah. Let's see what we have uh -oh. got. Let's see what we have got. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty. Yummy goodness. That's pretty. You know what? Originally, I was thinking about transferring her over to a... Uh, ah, you want that you know, loving. I'm There's a lot of loving in there. I'm that loving there. That's, That's for what sure. we call it. That is beautiful, guys. This meatloaf is just gorgeous. So I'm going to sprinkle the lavaquita over the top. You know, I like to say, you know, anywhere else in the world... Well, I don't want to say anywhere else. There's certain places in the world where fat and drippings and things of that nature, like maybe the South, or France, or maybe somewhere in Asia, that's that's called loving. That's called goodness. Well, that's where right? we're from. And you have other people, other places where they don't, they don't necessarily, they get rid of the fat. They discard that. No, that's 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 what you're, that's your flavor carrier. And then I've got a little bit of cilantro. Mm. Mm -hmm. Just to make yeah, that look, I'm not the only one that smells it. Y'all hear? William is over here William. screaming his tail off like he always does. <laughs> I think he needs to get his own. I'm gonna tell you something, Bobby Flay. I love him. Yeah. Follow him. Everything Follow he does. Follow him. I remember you telling I love me about him. that. And he's got Nacho, and Nacho's a Mancoon, and he's got Stella as his little sister, and mm -hmm. and Nacho has his own Instagram, and he's running his own show right now, and we're actually William is actually. I'm entering to win his special gift that he's giving. It's for cats in the United States only. And mm. uh, and I love the fact that William likes to be a little vocal because yeah. those cats are vocal. That's that a part. He's a part of it now. He's like in every episode. He's right in every. Now, he's so. in the sweet scoop. He was he was gonna be on the clubhouse intro, but he jumped <laughs> out of my lap. <laughs> he didn't want to be in that one. But anyway, so this is what it is. It's gorgeous, and I'm gonna do a little cut so you can see. Hopefully we've hidden that spinach in there so Uncle B mm -hmm. doesn't see it. I'm telling you, he's drinking the, uh, he's eating the equivalent of a few V8s every day, and he don't even know it. Get in there. So you, you, you and and how? So you, I, you had it at 350, and how long was it? We, we have it in there for about an hour. About an hour. About an hour. About an okay. Hour. So I'm gonna cut down into it. You cut it like you do any other meatloaf, really. You know. And I guess what I'll do is just try to pick it up and put it on there so you can see it like that. See how it's kind of in a roll? It's a little bit of a roll there. You can see in there the swirl and that spinach is hidden. So hopefully I'll get away with None this. None the wiser. None the wiser. We'll see. He's so hungry, y'all. He doesn't even notice the green stuff. But look at this gorgeous. This is so beautiful. We're going to actually make a Spanish rice to serve with this. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to make a Spanish rice. That's the next thing I'm going to be doing here in the kitchen. Listen, I hope you guys have found some value in this. If you did, do us a favor and like and share. Don't forget to ring the bell so that you're notified when we drop another episode of the Two Chefs Show. We'll see you soon.